What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. Again, what if Do I said you think to you- a guy like Grush is, is making it up then? Who? Grush? Yeah. Um, I really have almost no knowledge about him. The stuff that I've seen from uh, American Alchemy, from, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Mitchell? He, he did an interview on a podcast called American Alchemy. <clears throat> who I I, I'm in I touch with, that. Jesse, Jesse My uh, Michaels or Mitchells. Yeah, he's in LA. Uh, I'm supposed to see him sometime. Anyway, he did like, oh, there are bodies inside and stuff like that. The more precise that you make something, like uh, in other words, I say, Julian, I saw a car go by today and it was a yellow car. Uh, you'd say, okay, well, that's a uh, you know, high probability. And then if I say, and there's a, there's a Trump rally down the street and, uh, and I saw the, on the back of the car, it had a bumper sticker. It said Trump 2024. Which do you think is more likely to have happened? Um, and you just don't know anything else about me. I'm just telling you there's a Trump rally, and that's true. And I saw a, car, a yellow car, or I saw a yellow car with a Trump bumper sticker on it going towards the Trump rally, which is happening right now. Which one do I think which is, is more, more likely? Yeah, which would be more likely to you? Well, if we know for a fact that the rally is happening, fact, yep. then yeah, that's technically more likely. No, the more restrictions you put on something, the less probable it becomes, not the more probable it becomes. What do you mean? You're if I, to like if I said, if I, the more kind of boundaries and conditions and specificity that you put on something. I'm talking about the rally itself. I know that, but that could be completely irrelevant, right? It could be just a, a yellow car. You Do you admit that there's more yellow cars in the world than yellow cars with Trump stickers on it? Yes. So why would you think just because there's an, I gave you some additional information that was really to distract you? It's yeah, I like think the, we're saying the same thing here. Keep going. You're saying it's more likely that the, uh, I saw a car, a yellow car, that no. had a Trump sticker. No. Oh, you're just saying that it had. A, I'm you, saying it's. I, I I think I answered your question wrong because now I may understand it better. Yeah. But what I was saying is between the two events, the rally happening or someone seeing a yellow car with a Trump sticker, which one's more realistic or which one's more likely? Well, I said, well, it's 100. percent We know the rally happened. They might have seen something wrong if they saw a moving car with a sticker that they maybe didn't see. Well. It's hard for me to parse exactly what, what we're talking about, but I'll say this. The more conditions you put on something, the less likely it becomes. Just like I said to you. Sure. If I say you weigh less than 1,000 kilograms, it's much more likely that that's true than you weigh 104 kilograms, 0.237 but, oh, grams, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the more restrictions you put on it, the less probable. So if I put more and more restrictions on things like the origin of life and then how did conscious life begin and what properties are, regu are, are required for life to exist, if you look at all the things that had to conspire for us to be here having this podcast right now. There's probably, you know, trillions, if not an infinite number of things, yeah. each one of which had almost infinitesimal probability. Just flap of a butterfly's wing. Oh, yeah, flap of a... Yeah. But just look, there are 400 million uh, sperm brethren that you and I beat out, okay? We, we kicked them out. That's one 400 million shot, right? Literally. Wait, one, I think it's four trillion, right? <laughs> no, it's 400 million. It's 400 million? Yeah. I don't know about you. You're, you seem young. Only, virile. Listen, I, I don't listen, know. There's only a 400 us million guys, shot? Only wow. uh, us old guys. Uh, we're talking about 400 million sperms. Interesting. Um, so we beat it out, right? So just looking at that, it's... A, it's right? So any, any given... Um, a configuration of probabilities that had to come together is almost zero. But if you start speaking in generalities, the problem comes in, and this is just the fallacy that Joe and Carl Sagan and others are succumbing to, who really believe it. I actually don't think Carl Sagan believed it. Uh, you don't be, think Carl Sagan believed there was life? I don't think that he would say, well, belief was important to him. It wasn't, it wasn't at all. He would say evidence. So he would say, there's no evidence, but there's a possibility for it. And so that's where this, this thing about Mars being next to Earth came in. That's why I brought it up. So if you, you, you can't say, again, this didn't prove that life only originated on Earth, the fact that Mars doesn't have life. But if you put a whole bunch of these things together, if you said no star within 70 light years of us has any evidence for extraterrestrial intelligence or life or anything like that, then you say, well, it's only 70 light years within a, a, a Milky Way that's 100,000 light years. Okay, keep spreading out. There are people that do these calculations and they find the following statistics. And these are people that believe, or if you like, want to believe that there were and are aliens in the universe, civilizations, technological, which I think there's zero, there's certainly no evidence for any of this, right? I mean, uh, that there are evidence for alien planets. Let's say Grush is evidence right. Evidence that you've been able to see. Uh, that I have uh, been able to subject or has been subjected to a scientific rigor commensurate with the scientific method that I practice and my colleagues practice. That's right. Even Drush doesn't say that he saw it. He says that he knows the people that saw it, right? I'm not denigrating what he says he saw or what he believes. He's certainly more of a hero than I am on a, on a, on a YouTube channel. But, <laughs> uh, but, but for him to come out and say it at great risk, et cetera. Um, but it's not evident. It's not scientific. It's not replicable. It's not falsifiable in the same sense, right? Is he saying that people saw it? So I can say that some people said they saw stuff that didn't, you know, may, I don't have his security clearances, obviously. But, um, 
But look at look at all these different uh, things that have to come together for in order for life to exist on another planet and for technological life to exist and so forth. And I start to think, besides the uh, the visitations from Earth, is there any other which is disputed? Right? Nobody nobody's saying for sure Grush is right or, or sure. I have had on uh, Ryan uh, Graves, the pilot who um, you know with his colleagues witnessed certain phenomena. Yeah, there. I think he saw DARPA weapons. On that one it could personally. be. It could be. Yeah, he's he's a very interesting guy, and he's doing good work. And and it's kind of like global warming stuff. Like even if you don't believe global warming is truly happening and it's caused by human beings, reducing carbon emissions will have some benefits to human health and pollution and ancillary. Right. So even if Ryan's wrong and they saw DARPA stuff, it'll make the lives of pilots and commercial airline travel and so forth much safer. But I'm really straying far afield. <clears throat> Let me just say this: for us to believe that there is. Uh, visitation by advanced extraterrestrial intelligences requires a host of different things to have occurred, all of which would make me incredibly excited as a physicist because it would allow me to short circuit maybe thousands of years of remember, <laughs> of, 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 of evolution as a scientist. It would just be like string theory is wrong. Sorry, move on to something mm -hmm. else. You put more money in cosmology. There'd be so much advancement in technologies. So physicists have a confirmation bias of a vested interest in this being correct. But look at some of the most biggest doubters of the extraterrestrial intelligent hypothesis. These are physicists as well. Even people like Avi Loeb and stuff, he won't say that he believes that these are definitive proofs of extraterrestrial intelligence or physics beyond the standard model or other things. He will say that this is these are things that we need to collect more data on, and that's why he's building these telescopes at Harvard and around the world and trying to collect samples from the bottom of the you know Marianas Trench or wherever he is. And, and Papua New Guinea to try to find, you know, the, the shrapnel left over because there's so few artifacts. Astronomy, cosmology, searching for alien life is amongst the most challenging things there can be to study. If I want to study some nematode worm, okay, there's trillions of these worms or bacteria. I can do an experiment, pour some, you know, I don't know, uh, vitamin C on one, don't do it for the other. And one dies, one dies. You can do experiments. How do you do experiments in the cosmos? There's only one, or the universe, one. <laughs> How do you do experiments with like Oumuamua, which cruise by at you know, a good fraction of, you know, uh, 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 you know, 10 times faster than any commercial spacecraft that has ever traveled? You can't, it's a one-time only thing. It makes what we do so hard to do, mm -hmm. and therefore we project onto it what we wanna see, and that's the cardinal sin of a scientist. It's what got me into trouble with the dust findings and so forth, that you saw what you wanted to see, or I did. But let's say you're right in, in the theory about bicep, which right now obviously can't be proven or right. anything like that. But let's say you are and you figure out that due to inflation, we therefore have a multiverse. Does that then bring us onto the plane of, you know, when, when we define an alien, it's just something foreign that we don't think is from this earth. We don't necessarily know where that comes from, whether it comes from another galaxy and figured out how to traverse wormholes and time and shit like that, or whether or not it could be some sort of future human or some sort of future iteration that exists from the presence that we're in. If you were able to prove that, though, if Bicep were able to come through and eventually find the right measurement to be able to find inflation and therefore say, aha, we may have, we may have multiverse eye. Multiverse is there. <laughs> Platypi. Would that then point to the fact that we could have people present here right now who are, as we might know them, half biological entities, whatever they might be, that are those who are future humans who have figured out how to switch between multiverses and or time? Mm, wow, you, you layered in about 10,000 different things. Now you're channeling Tom DeLong on me with the future humans. Um, so I had him on and uh, about two years ago, and uh, I'll just say most of my audience wasn't thoroughly impressed with how he acquitted himself. I actually happen to like him. I mean, it's impossible not to like him. Um, and this colleague, Jim Semivan, who's an ex-CIA agent. Yeah, he's surrounded by spooks, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. So everyone's like, uh, they keyed in because Jim said, you know, we're the U.S. government. We're not allowed to lie. And the roasting in the comment section was, was uh, just unparalleled. Um, I'll say this. There is a tendency to kind of project onto um, aliens a sort of sense of um, the anxieties, fears, desires, hopes, mm. wishes of our current civilization. And this is not new. This actually dates back to the atomic age, 1940. It's not a coincidence that the first atomic bomb a detonation on Earth by human beings was done not far from where Roswell uh, is in New Mexico, where the first this crash that occurred in 1947, or allegedly had, uh, had occurred, uh, with alien bodies and alien spacecraft and so forth. 
Um, many of these phenomena do occur on military installations to this very yes. day. Um, many of them are um, also not only kind of denigrated by uh, people of the scientific community, not saying I never denigrate these people that have more courage in their little fingers than I do in my whole body, but I will say that the, some of the tell to me, to use a poker analogy, we're not far from Atlantic City, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, how are they treated by the people on their colleagues and cohorts? Mm. You would think that another pilot um, wouldn't mock, you know, by putting little green men on, the, on David Fravor's pillow or all the stuff that he alleges that they did. And he, he's crap. I'm not saying he, he didn't do it. He didn't witness what he did. But these people should, aren't they worried about like encountering these phenomena? If they're really seen mm. every day, as Ryan told me, they're seen every day and people report cubes and spheres or spheres and cubes and that no commercial airliners uh, as yet, and he's working to advance the reporting mechanisms and stuff to destigmatize it. There's a psychological component that's fundamentally not scientific. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. After all, I mean, circumstantial evidence on eyewitness testimony, it's a mixed thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is used in court. Sometimes it's not used in court. Sometimes photographic evidence can't be used in court. And we're getting into an era of deep fakes and so forth like that. So Elon Musk saying, oh, with all these camera technologies, shouldn't the videos have gotten better? I think that's a little simplistic too. Mm. Um, but what you want to do is not pit. Natural allies, as I've said, and I find this a lot on my channel, I get comments like this. Of course, you astronomers, you're paid by NASA to have this opinion about uh, of that, that aliens don't exist. Even though I just told you that I would give, you know, like, meh, I give your right finger to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to have true evidence, scientific, replicable data from the existence of an extraterrestrial intelligence. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.